Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline. Welcome to Midnight Mandela. How is everybody doing this week? It's been a little quieter for me, but I still have a lot of Mandelas for y'all. And uh, I was just reading all of the chat. Let me just change it to live chat. Okay, so Shari, um, let's see, there was two things you said. Oh, that weird thing about the shoes. Yeah, that's interesting. So she's chatting that she had two pairs of shoes she wanted to get rid of, I assume donate or whatever. And then when she went back to get them, one of each shoe was missing. So that's interesting because we don't get uh, we don't get as many missing stuff. Well, maybe we do, but I haven't seen it like that before. Like if they were just both gone, then you could go, okay, you know, I just forgot where I put them or something. But one of each is kind of telling. But I'm wondering if it's related to the fact that you wanted to get rid of them. So you had that um, intent in your mind and maybe it manifested that way. I mean, I know it's a little bit of a stretch, but I'm kind of looking for patterns in here. So, um, for me, I actually did have something that disappeared and it was this can of paint. So when I moved into this location, I picked up two little cans of the paint that are, that's painted in here, the color and the brand. So I could touch up, you know, so recently I bought some little hooks for coat, for a coat hanger and, uh, the, my friend who put them in, he kind of like used his pen to like mark it and so I was like oh I'm gonna just like paint that all out now I know that that freaking can was in the bathroom I have like a little shelf thing in the bathroom here and um I looked at it so many times and I was like okay the thing is that I was the I took them both here well I was supposed to take them both here but I only took one of them here and the other one is still at the house someplace. So I, every time I look at that can, I go, ah, I got to get the other one. I got to find out where it is and bring that in. So today I'm like, I hope the one that I have is the correct sheen for that wall because there's flat and there's semi-gloss, right? So the wall is flat, like means non-shiny if you don't know the English terminology. And um, so I'm like, oh, I hope it's the flat sheen that I've got and so I go in the bathroom and there's none in there there's none so I don't know like I know I have mixed feelings about those paint because every time I see the first one I'm like oh, I haven't sorted out the second one but now I, I want them back I want the flat one let's just say so I can fix the wall thing so I don't know what's up with that but that was like because I, I, I swear I haven't touched that one now there is a slim chance that I moved it but I don't know why I would have. So, I mean, I can't swear it's a Mandela, but it was it was weird. And it should be in here somewhere, and I don't know where the hell it is. I mean, this place is not that big. And there's not many places I would put it. Like, I'm not going to put it on the shelf with my, with my product, for instance. There's no way I would ever do that. So I would just move it to one of the few other shelves that for non-product non items and... I don't know why I would because it really goes in the bathroom because I just have certain stuff in the bathroom it goes that so I don't know it's just weird so there was that that's weird and then there's another old Mandela that I um old new Mandela I'll cover in a minute which is also a weird thing so you had half the intention <laughs> yeah you had half the intention of getting rid of them you know if they both disappeared then it would bug you because then you'd wonder if you moved them and you still have to get rid of them so maybe it was mixed feelings again. I don't know. But, you know, I do agree with what you said um, about, like, the whole, okay, I know there's a whole narrative, like, the evil people control the earth and the new world order and all that. And um, it's kind of easy to get sucked into the narrative because I hear it so often, and obviously there's a lot of evidence for that. But I do, I do actually feel at core that Shari has it right that that stuff is like a projection of our own fears and our own greed and our own selfishness. So like, for instance, I, I look at it all the time around me. So a lot of people that I know are like, oh, those evil people. But you can see the seeds of that kind of behavior in people around you like I've definitely heard people say oh well you know you shouldn't be all crooked and blah 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 but you know you know those same people would still give favors to their friends free pizzas 
you know, free this and that. Um, they would still say take their friend's side even if they kind of knew their friend was wrong in an argument. Um, there was There's a lot of little things that if you kind of multiply them a few times, then they equal what we see on our leaders, right? Like we have that stuff in us. So I think a lot of people like to act like they're a whole nother breed of creature that's completely evil and unrelated to us. But the seeds of that behavior, I see it all around. Like if you ever were in like a, um, a club, like a hobby club, you're going to see all that infighting, that power games and stuff. You're going to see it at the lower level. And probably you're going to feel some of that urge yourself, you know, especially if you haven't had a little conversation with your dark side and kind of get to know your own insecurities. So the kind of the Buddhist tradition has always been that you, the way to help the world is to actually improve inside of you. Um, and then in that way, by being more pure, I mean, I'm not saying perfect or anything, certainly not, but um, the, the more pure, the more clear, the more clean, the more honest, the more truth that you are, then the more you project that. So the way to clean up out there would be to clean up in here. And of course, you have way more control over in here than you would out there assuming out there was separate. However, if out there is heavily related to you, then again, the way to clean up out there would be to clean up in here. So, you know, we do see these characters or whatever they are, whoever they are, shifting and changing. That Some of their history will change or past will change. So, I mean, it is clear that that stuff can change. I don't know if we just shift to a different timeline or it actually changes. Um, but anyway, that is the goal that I have. Um, I won't say I know for sure that there isn't, you know, a new world order or whatever the heck, but I don't know if there is either. So what can you do right now? You know, you can work on yourself. There's always that. There's always that. And I do find that when I work on myself, a lot of things around me change. Um, and I wonder sometimes if that leads to a lot of shifts. You know, because I do feel like sometimes when I work really hard on my own issues and I kind of make a breakthrough and, and sometimes it does seem like that's when a lot of shifts happen. I'm, I'm not sure on that, but I kind of feel like that. Uh, things are disappearing and reappearing in my sister's place daily. Huh. Quantum computers, I wonder what that's about. People in the future are outside the matrix that can alter anything. Unless there's like a piece of us outside, you know, because I wonder if we're like avatars, basically. Um, and if we're avatars, then it even could be us that are, are programming outside. There's kind of that Buddhist thing like we don't exist. I don't really like to say I don't exist at all, but it, it does kind of seem like maybe we're um an epiphenomena might be a word like we're a creation out of other things that kind of congeal to us but it, you know when you think about it, it's weird i'm i'm in this body but i barely have concept of even what's going on in there like say um i don't want to say anything real bad but say there was a, a benign small tumor in my arm okay I don't want to use an icky example, too icky, but like I, and, and maybe it's just causing some minor problem. All I would know is some, there's a, like there's maybe a little pain or something. I wouldn't even know what's in there. Even though it's my body, I wouldn't know why that pain happened, which when you think about it is really weird. It's like, how come we don't even have knowledge of what's inside our own self? Why couldn't we have that? It seems to me like we should. But if we're just kind of sitting in here, riding in here, but we're not, it's not really us, us, then it would make more sense, wouldn't it? Like that we don't really understand what's going on, that we don't know the processes in our own body. Um, so that's one of the reasons I kind of think that. Anyway, I am kind of lost the train of thought anyway, so I'm going to go back to here. 
uh, 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 so, oh, and what was the thumbnail? Uh, I think, was it Shari who caught that? Yeah, it is that. It's like a totally m mutant lemon that um, some wom a woman online said she just, it just grew in her yard, like on her tree. So there's actually been a lot of um, images of like mutated fruits and stuff lately and I sort of noticed the last year I would sometimes even get them from the grocery store like with weird bumps and and I never used to get that I mean I never used to see any mutated anything all the lemons look like lemons uh, maybe the birds pecked them or something but uh, it does kind of feel like the the rules that kind of bind stuff into their form are much looser now. I've seen a very strange area where I drive every day, a building that never existed. There was no construction. It was overnight. Yep. Yep. Like that road that's down the street from me used to be a driveway and now it's a road. There's definitely some new buildings in town although I haven't <sighs> there is one that's down there that oh you know that's another thing I was gonna say I saw that this morning keep an eye if you guys have drainage canals in your town keep an eye on those because it does seem like those can be pretty shifty where they are in town what buildings are next to um, how, what the sides of the walls are was, is it like, like lately it seems like ours got a lot bigger. I've noticed that. And now there's this weird zigzag. They used to just be like this, but now they're like, like, why, why is it zigzagging? Um, and today when I was dro driving by, um, so where it goes under the road keeps changing. But today I saw that there was all this, I'm not sure if it's stonework or like, bricks that look like stone I'm gonna have to like stop and climb out of the vehicle and see if I can inspect that area but it's there's not like really convenient parking so I don't really have time for it today but that all showed up like it looks really old now I, I it used to just be cement and I, I don't think they did anything down there there hasn't been any construction on there so that's changed again I think since you know when the last couple days <laughs> that's changed so those canals those like drainage ditch ways or whatever those have been really shifty and i'm kind of wondering if it's you know related to the fact that this area now gets tropical storms um i'm hearing a lot about tornado class winds and stuff we never used to have tornadoes here but now occasionally we do I think there was this last storm that went by. There was another a tornado spotted in, inland. So, yeah, I guess we, we get tornadoes now. Let's see. I know, Chari, you were saying something else I wanted to comment on, but I can't rem remember. Oh, Oprah. Yeah. Okay. I did see that her name was Orpa, but I think it was like a couple years ago. And I do believe I, I, I think I covered it on this channel. Actually, I'm not sure if I covered it, but I do remember reading that and thinking it was weird. Oprah's real name is Orpa. Like, why didn't you just use Orpa then? Because I don't see how Oprah is any better than Orpa. I think there might have been some weird story behind it or something, but it, I did think that was really weird. Kind of wonder now when those kind of things happen. I mean, like, is there an Orpa timeline and people came in and they remember her as Orpa and they get here and they're like, well, that, well everybody calls her Oprah. Um, we have Fish Crossing Desert. All right, let's click on that. Shari's link. Let's see, we're over here. Armored catfish cry. <laughs> Can you imagine? 15 years ago. <laughs> I mean, we're starting to see this slowly. But can you imagine 15 years ago that someone told you, yeah, fish are going to crawl out of the 
lakes and oceans and walk across the land and you'd be like, that is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. <laughs> uh, I'm writing it down because it's hilarious. So this is interesting you brought this one up too because... Um, There, this one, this one. <sighs> There's, you know, I had this on before, but there seems to be a lot more water in there, like twice as much water as the last time I had this image on. And one of the reasons I'm looking at it is because um, when I first had this on, these were kind of, they weren't as big as they are now. And I, I probably should have saved it. I'm trying to remember if I saved it. Um, so one of these showed up on one of the, I don't know, it was one of the subreddits. And what had changed was that one of these, whatever these are, these drifts, one of these, the, the uh, uphill area right here on one of these drifts, I remember it kind of, this being kind of the size of like a couple swimming pools maybe, like one of these would be a swimming pool and then another but now these are like mini lakes and so like these drifts are now 10 people high you know they're like 50 100 foot high uh, to go up one of these drifts and before i don't i just don't remember it being anywhere that epic so i saw basically a video of somebody clambering down one of these steep cliffs and then kind of jumping into one of these lakes or something like that but it was basically you saw the scale was like epic uh way like five six maybe ten times bigger than when i first covered these so from a distance they look kind of similar but yet they're not so that's interesting that you just happen to have this catfish you know so i was i was looking at i'm like yeah i've had those on before should i cover it should i not cover it should i cover it should i not cover it uh and here it is again i guess it wanted to get covered no ordinary fish it can survive on land then when it needs to find water uh, miss the middle part. It's a fish on a mission. All right, let's see how big these waters are here. See, it's like a, a, a lake. It's there's. It's not just a swimming pool or two. Look at how big these are. Ah, see, that totally shows it. Look at how big those are now. That's insane. There was no way they were that size before. What? So they're saying they just follow. The fish psychically know where the water is, so they just follow the fish because fish are smarter than people now, apparently. <laughs> they can follow the fish. So what? This fish just cruises around and then goes back to the lake when it's done because it knows where its lake is. Now... You do have to be a little careful because some of these videos really kind of ham it up. But on the flip side, it may well be that that's just the timeline we're going to. And um, they aren't hamming it up in some timelines, even if they are in other timelines. This is crazy, though. Armored catfish is a whole family of fish. I want to learn more. Okay, here it is. Holospernatum. Blah, blah, blah. Known as a tamuata in, Bra in Brazil. Present in all of South America and the Andes, north of Buenos Aires, including Orinoco, Trinidad, etc., etc., Inhabits tropical standing waters or swamps. Can breathe both with gills and through its intestines. <laughs> so, you know, it started out with those turtles that breathe through their butt. Now these fish can do it. Uh, there was that little blip about humans being able to do it if they had their guts cleaned out really good. 
Um, <laughs> how far is that going to go? I'll just, just put, <laughs> oh, lungs are jammed. Well, just stuff air up your butt. <laughs> You really can't make this stuff up. There actually are researching that. Last I checked, they're researching being able to give uh, assistant air through your, <laughs> your intestinal tract. <laughs> and they found, what, that, that it was almost enough, like they, they could get a lot of air in that way. <laughs> Newly hatched larvae do not have the ability to breathe air through their intestines. However, it's possible that they absorb oxygen through their skin at this point before the armor plates have developed. The respiratory intestine has not finished developing until, what, 23 days? The respiratory intestine has not finished develop. Did you ever think you would say those words, the respiratory intestine? Those are two words that do not belong together. The respiratory intestine is well developed between 24 and 32 days. H. literale has two types of hemoglobin, anodic and cathodic. Anodic hemoglobin has a relatively low oxygen affinity and has marked Bower effects. Uh, that's hemoglobin's oxygen binding affinity is inversely related to both acidity and concentration of carbon dioxide. That's the Bower effect. Uh, all right, so more carbon dioxide then would be less affinity to oxygen, if I'm understanding that correctly. Well, cathodic hemoglobin, hemoglobin lack Pacific pH effects. Cathodic hemoglobin has pronounced reverse Bower effect in which oxygen affinity increases with decreased pH. Okay, so by having either both of those, then wherever the pH goes one of the bloods will be able to do the job. One of the hemoglobins will. Uh, uh, uh. Relation to humans, valuable resource fished in the deltas of the Amazon and the Orinoco. All right, they don't really say anything about people being able to follow the fish to water. So that's... We're not really sure how true that is right now, but it, it I would not be surprised at all if it if it came along. Let's put this way back over here. <laughs> Been through the desert on a carp with no name. <laughs> Wait till they become like huge. You know, they're small, but everything gets bigger, so. <laughs> Where does it come from, the airport? I would assume it's one of those other pools. I don't think we had those pools originally, like, 10 years ago in my timeline, but they did show up a number of years ago. Oprah being Harpo spelled. Yeah, that's right, actually. And then her name was always Orpa. So, huh. Oh, and Oprah explained her mother misspelled Orpa from the Bible. Okay, so her mother wanted to name her Oprah but misspelled it? That actually just sounds really weird <laughs> I dreamt last night that I was commissioned to paint Ringo Starr's automobile at his house huh Oh, that reminds me. I did have a weird dream. 
I wrote down some of it, and it's still scribbled down on the piece of paper next to my bed, but I was like, I'm going to do this stuff, then I'm going to look at the paper, and I didn't do it, so I'll have to do that tonight. I watched the Dr. Sala interview of a remote viewer, and you can hear someone or something commenting in short bursts. I don't know what it means. I know we've had some instances, instances lately where people were giving testimony and, it, and it, you could hear someone mumbling the answers like they had a little ear set or something um, or somebody just outside the camera whispering the answers. See, yeah, I do, you know, I don't know. I just don't know if they really have any of the control we, we give to them. Maybe we do totally make our own lives and they don't really have any control, but that's just part of the trap. The more you think they have control, then that idea itself limits you, is kind of my suspicion. So you're basically, it's like those, like they say how they train the elephant. Like when it's really tiny, they um, chain the leg, right? And then as it, when it's little, it cannot break those chains. But as it gets larger, it could. But it it's trained when it was little that it can't. So it just keeps assuming it can't break the chain. So it never tries because it doesn't know it can. Uh, it just doesn't occur to it that, like, maybe I can break the chains because it just is convinced it can't. Uh, and I, I suspect that's us. You know, we just don't realize that we can break the chains. Remember the explosion sound you heard when Scarab was live broadcasting? Not even... I don't remember that. I, I haven't watched a bajillion of his shows, though. Not even 12 hours later, something happened here. Huh. Was it an explosion sound? So, I don't know, San Diego has a lot of, like, weird uh, sounds and stuff, so. Ah, uh, did I cover their, um, I think it was the end of, like, the day after the show last week. Uh, I was driving, and they announced on the radio uh, that they still don't know what the mystery smell was. I'm like, what mystery smell? So, I looked it up, and apparently, last week, we had, uh, in the morning... There was this smell that blanketed the entire San Diego. Now, I was my house is just on the edge, way in the north end of San Diego. So I didn't smell it, and it might have been because I was in here or sleeping or whatever. But So I look it up on Google, and the weird thing is that every couple of years, apparently, we have a weird mystery smell that blankets the whole area. And the smells... So this last smell was described as the smell of burning electrical wires. And I'm not sure I know what that smells like exactly, but a lot of people in the know said that's a smell. Other people just described it as a burning smell. And it was from the ocean to like a half hour inland uh, to like uh, 45 minutes south. I mean, it was like a wide range. And uh, nobody ever... So this is the weird thing because every one of these smells... Then the um, the EPA and the the uh, pollution monitoring station all like check the air and they always announce there's nothing there like everything looks totally normal like we can all smell it right oh I didn't smell this one but everybody can smell it and yet there we don't and then they announce we don't know what it is but we assure you the air is safe to breathe I'm like wait a minute you don't know what it is. Do they monitor for every tiny little particle? No, I doubt it. You know, so they don't know what it is, but they know it's safe to breathe. So what, whatever. But so there was that one. And then apparently some years ago, there was like this uh, petrochemical smell that spread the whole area. And um, uh, there was one other weird 
uh, smell that was kind of related. I can't remember it. Going back a few years before that, I'm like, so I don't know. Is that normal? Like, does your area get weird mystery smells that cover the whole area every four or five years? And always the same thing. Well, we, the monitoring station checked the air and they weren't able to find anything. It was like the whole of San Diego can smell it, but we, so much for technology, we can't find out what it is. They might occasionally flop around the ground along the creek to get another pond, but a desert, no way. You know, Vivian, we've been watching these evolve, though, because first there was just a few, those mud skippers that would go a little ways, and then and then there was like more and more longer and longer distance. So I'm not exactly shocked to see these desert ones. They're just like the next level up, I think. Yeah, so, you know, they were just, they were saying, when I looked into those water ponds last time, assuming it hasn't changed, they basically said that underneath there was like some kind of really hard uh, ground, like stone, and it would trap the water so even though there was sand uh, on the top it made like little swimming pools or something it was kind of hard to understand but that was basically what they were saying back then dune 2 part 2 freaking so yeah it's like after the fremen warriors release all the the uh, water from their uh for their catch what do they call those catch machines uh, well, I'm talking about the Dune movie, in case you think I've totally lost my mind. But Lots of fish travel across the land. It's crazy. I mean, the, when you really step back and look at it, it's crazy. It seems a little less crazy because it goes in little steps, and you get used to the step, and then it's here, and then it's here, and then it's here, and here. But if you look at it from your brain cells of 15 years ago, the fish are coming out of the waters and walking all over land. Now it's deserts. Uh, you know, I'm waiting for them to, like, walk across Antarctica. I mean, it's crazy town. I find all these Emmys in normal Telegram channels. People share them as if it's normal. Yeah, I find a lot of mine on Reddit. I know. So when I saw that with the, you know, I'm like, oh, I want to go there. A million little swimming pools with a nice sandy beach to hang out on. <laughs> Desert flounder. <laughs> Troy Polu, Pola Malu having a cheesehead commercial during the Super Bowl. That was good to remember, but it never occurred. Ah, no, I don't know that one, but I don't really watch a lot of Super Bowl. All right, let's see. Oh, this one, it was, like, faked last time I checked. Last I checked, this was faked, was this story. Plus, it's kind of creepy now. There's a lot of, ch like, she doesn't... She doesn't look like she volunteered for this and this one and the ones that I remember in the old days. Yes. All right. This is interesting because when did I look at this? Like four years ago? There was a whole narrative that it was faked, that this was faked. So what, it's not faked anymore? This is interesting. All 
All right, so now they found the originals in 2012. All right, so I guess it it's not faked. Oh, weird. Okay, okay. I know I was in a timeline where they said this was fake, though, for a while. Okay. Nothing holds still anymore. That's why I have to say, last time I checked this, it was fake. Way back, it was not faked. So it's funny because uh, it's interesting you're talking about weird sounds because uh, Dave, who rents the other building on the property, he was just telling me, to, asking me today if um, I hear voices, like vague almost voices when the fan is on. And I never used to, but shortly after I learned of the Mandela and I was kind of freaked out and I was laying there and the fan was on. And I did kind of almost hear voices in the fan. And it freaked me out because I had just learned of the Mandela and everything was so weird already. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't want to hear voices when there's no voices. And I was like, no, 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 no. And then I kind of stopped hearing them. I was like, I'm not listening. I'm not hearing those. No. And uh, so I don't really now, but I kind of feel like I could if I tried. I just don't think I really want to right now. But he asked, uh, he asked that out of the blue. I, I don't know if it's happened to him, but, you know, he's older than I am. So it'd be kind of weird if he suddenly did now. But uh, he asked me if I ever do. And so I just said, oh, well, you know, it's common. Because, indeed, I've over the last few years, I've seen many people talk about that. And in my old timeline, that was like for schizophrenics, okay? It wasn't regular people. And that's, I think, why it freaked me out when I started to hear them because in my mind, that's for schizophrenics and I don't want to be a schizophrenic. But now I, I see things on Reddit where, oh, it's normal. Lots of people hear voices in the fan sound and white noise. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever. It's normal now, which kind of a relief because then that means I'm not getting to be schizophrenic, hopefully. Um, and especially if two out of three people in the house now can do it. And so I'm just kind of wondering, maybe he's heard it lately and he was worried that he was getting crazy, you know, but that's kind of how humans are now, I think. And it is interesting that originally it was for schizophrenics because maybe we are just, you know. I've often wondered if schizophrenics basically have too thin a veil. Like they see stuff outside the frequency range of here and then it confuses them. So you've got, you know, your own emotions, whatever's out there. It's just too much, too much for the human brain to tolerate. But if we're kind of moving in that direction slowly, um, then maybe a little bit, a little bit of what schizophrenics see now are starting to bleed into our regular realities. Shari, you remember it being fake, right? Yeah, okay, good. I'm not crazy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, I know we've had this on here that it was fake some years ago. Ah... <sighs> This is, oh, yes, you got the Mars stuff. I did save some of that. So I'm not even going to click on this before I predict what you're going to have on there. But maybe you'll have something different. But what I saw this week was that more Mars photos where the sky looks even more blue. Now, it used to just be all right during, what was it, sunset it's blue, which it never was blue before, but the sky had been blue near sunset and then I saw even more videos of a very bluish looking sky it, it looks like our sky a lot not quite that dark but you know when our sky is kind of overcast blue that kind of look hazy blue 
And the other thing they're saying is the natural color of the sky when there's dust in the air, when there's dust in the air is butterscotch, which is not red. Butterscotch is like orange, okay, it's an orange tan. So they're saying that's the color of Mars is butterscotch, not red. Okay, so I'm, I did save some of that, uh, but I probably won't get to it, but let's see. Yeah, see, blue, blue, and not just when at sunset or something. I mean, look at the shadows. They're not long. So, yeah, this is this is horse hockey. I should make it larger. That <laughs> That's like effing earth. I'm sorry. That just looks like out in the desert. <laughs> With a bunch of garbage. This is total, yeah. So I saw some of these images. I didn't look at the whole pan. Actually, I might have looked at the whole pan. Oh, yes, I did, because these weird blocked out. What is, what is this? What is this? Explain to me what this is. Like, why are there weird squares there? I mean, if, because I'm assuming this is the lander. If the lander is there, in the past, we did see chunks of lander in the image. We just see like a big piece of machinery or something. But why are there why are there just squares of nothing there? We shouldn't see we just see the dirt and then chunks of lander. And these blocked out areas are not in the camera because they they move out of the way. See it moves and disappears. So this I was wondering what this is. Why are they blocked out areas? That's what I was yeah, so I did see the uh I did see this panorama, and I was really curious what those blocked out areas And I did some preliminary looking, but I was not able to figure out what the deal is with the blocked out areas. It always amazes me. I see those, and, like, nobody comment. All the comments, I mean, do they not see them? Um, flat earthers will say it's Nevada. Yeah, because it effing looks like Nevada. Um... <laughs> Yeah, blue sky. See, people notice. People do notice. Why is the sky blue now? Oh, somebody asked about the sensor bars. Yes. Why are there sensor bars? Thank you. Just make me look stupid. All right. They're not sensor bars. I'm not an expert by any means, but I think they're just sections that weren't photographed. This isn't one whole picture. It's a bunch of pictures stitched together. Hmm. This is interesting. He's not an expert, but he knows they're not sensor bars. I still don't get it, though. Like, all of the pictures we've seen, there, there hasn't been anything like that in the past. They are hiding shadows, whatever took the picture. Well, then leave the shadows in there. They always left the shadows in there before. So one person says he doesn't know, but he's somehow sure, even though he doesn't know that they're due to stitching the photos together. Another person is sure that they're hiding shadows, whatever took the photo. Yeah. I don't know. So what? Nobody really knows. I've gotten really suspicious of these I know the answer people too because on the retcon we'll have like a weird Mandela and then someone will come on and go, no, this is the answer. Like they know. This is obviously blah, blah, blah. Like they have per firsthand knowledge of this material. But then when you look up that explanation, like you research it, it turns out to be complete bull. So... Why are people acting like they have the answer? I don't know. Sometimes it even sounds really plausible until you look it up and it's complete bull. And sometimes there'll be three of these that are different. This guy swears it's this guy. You know, so now it's like, ah, that that is there is a perfect example. Two different people acting like they have the answer, but the two answers do not match.
Don't forget the magic window cleaning dust storm. <laughs> yeah, I, I assume you're talking about, are we talking about the, uh, the dust storm that cleared off the, um, the solar panels so that it could operate for like years and years and years. Not that device, but previous ones. Joe Blore, yeah, I agree with you that the angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other. It's such an interesting concept the more I think about that. When I spend a lot of time thinking about that. I mean, it's in cartoons and everything. Is you you have these two voices and which one do you, do you listen to? Do you listen to the positive one or the negative one? And it's not just about doing bad things, I think, but also about thinking bad things. Like it even says in the Bible that it's how you think that's important. It, it's not just how you do. And if you're actually programming reality, even with your thoughts, then that would make sense. Of course, thoughts do actually lead to actions, so there's that too. Like, even if you're just thinking it now, if it builds and builds and builds, it is going to affect your actions. But still, I have a suspicion that thought itself is important. So, say you cover, covet thy neighbor's, well, I'm not going to cover it wives, but that's what's in the Bible. Covet thy neighbor's wife, but you never actually act on it, right? But just the mere thought, it says don't covet her. It doesn't say go, don't go after her. It says don't covet her. So it's just a really interesting. Now, how to just not think something that you don't want to think, that's, that's the challenging part. But I think the one way that works, though, is if you have all these thoughts, you can't just, like, turn them off. But one thing you can do is move your mind in a more positive direction. Just go, okay, I'll, I'm going to think about positive stuff. I'm going to think about um, like the significant other that I'm going to chase after for myself. I'm going to concentrate on improving my own, enriching my own life so I'm not as distracted by uh, other people's business. You know, those kind of things. You can do that. And it does work, I might say. I, I, it really does help. I mean, you got to. It becomes a habit over time. At first, it's harder, but the more you kind of work on it, it gets a little easier and a little easier and a more of a habit. If history can change so often, how can anything be accurate? Yeah, I know, I know. And sometimes I'm just like, ah, I'm not even going to learn this because it's going to change anyway. Um. Especially all that, like, DNA stuff. It's like, what? First, there just used to be X and Y chromosomes. Now there's a bajillion of them. Preliminal says, I think channelers got themselves into some serious complications. Not good. Um, I don't know about that. I, I think that they're probably... I, I've been getting to suspect that everything has, like... Potential advantages and potential pitfalls. And it just, it's going to depend on how you, how you operate it and how clean you are. Because my understanding with the Chandler is that, um, that you have control. Like it has to be, you have to be both ways and that's channeling. Like you both agree on it, right? Now, if it's possession, that's when you don't have control. Like it's, and I think the other thing is, um, channelers are are channeling like a good energy, right? So the good energy doesn't want to take control, and you know, really, you can feel when an energy is good and when it's not. You can feel when something is loving and kind, or when it's, you know, hateful and envious, and and you know, and as long as you are not full of hateful and envy, then you're not going to be very attracted to those. Like if you, if you meet those kind of people, then you'll be like, I don't, I just don't like, I don't want to be around this person. You know, you'll just, there'll be a natural urge to keep away. And if you're a positive person, you're going to be attracted to the positive people. And the reverse also happens. Negative people, if they're really negative, if they're really hateful, they won't like the goody two-shoes people. And they won't like, like I've literally heard people say, oh, that toxic positivity. Like 
toxic positivity, but if you're a really negative person, then positivity is toxic to you. You instinctively uh, don't want that. And, you know, I used to be a really negative person, and I indeed did not want, I would have said, oh, I don't know if I said toxic positivity, but I would, I definitely ha was much more averse to positivity back then. It's been a long road, but since I was kind of, you know, on the, I wasn't like violent, hateful kind, but I definitely was the depressed, negative kind, um, pessimistic, you could say. So I kind of been there enough to kind of know how it operates. So that's why I think um, that's probably why channeling isn't overly dangerous. If you're a positive person, because you will be attracted to the right kind of energy. And I think if you are attracted to the right kind of energy, then it can be a, a good experience. But if you're, if you're communing with a negative energy, the devil side, then you're just going to easily go more in that direction, very easily. I, I think I know you. I'm going to agree with this. I believe that negative influences us to try to get us to concentrate on the negative. Uh, yes, I agree with that. But I also think the positive does try to get us to concentrate more on the positive. I do think the positive tries to call. I trust guardian angel, but I don't trust channelers. The problem with channelers is you just don't know if it's it's real or not very easily. Like there's some of them look pretty fake, but they get on there. You don't know if they're really channeling some kind of outside energy or is it your real subconscious self? Okay, say it's your real subconscious self. That may be may not be a bad thing you know you may even be able to find out good info that way but we just don't know first of all what is being channeled and second of all we don't know if um they're being honest about it or they're just fakers for money or um i think you can kind of tell if they're negative because just the message that comes through will not be very nice but So, you know, it's tricky, though, because the Bible, there's all these different entities and things there, too. I don't think in the Bible it really says that you can't, you know, get information from angels or all those things uh, and still believe in God. Also, it's just obviously there's, I don't want to say minions because that sounds mean, but like helpers or whatever, apparently they're out there even in the Bible. So I just, you know, I don't really know of anything in the Bible that really says that you can't talk to like angels or something. Now I know that the church says that, but I'm, I'm pretty distrustful of the church as much as just what's in the Bible. Tianmen Square is named after a mountain called Tianmen. It changed to Tiananmen. All right, it's, is it Tiananmen? It's still Tian, Tiananmen Square, right? It's not Tianmen. Tianmen? It's Tiananmen. <laughs> What's the name of the square? Tian, Tiananmen. I think I did have that. It changed a little bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I, I did feel it change a little bit. It's Tiananmen, and I think it was Tiananmen before. I'm, I'm really quite sure. And I've had this on before. It was Tiananmen, but now it's Tiananmen. So for me, it was Tiananmen, and now it's Tiananmen. And that was one where I typed it so much because I used to talk about it a lot that I made sure I knew how to write it the angel with one eye is scary looking i was a christian for years and i never ever saw an angel that looked like that is that that like they said that they took the description out of the bible and then drew like 
what those they said those angels really look like according to the description in the bible and it looked like a giant eye or it looked like stuff like from a dm tree trip if you ever saw imagery from a dm tree trip there's a lot of um like eyeballs in um ge like a geometric patterns and stuff vaccinated people are positive people and look where it's got them i don't know i mean like i would not say they were positive people on average uh, although i do have to say some people i know took it and they seem to be totally fine so i don't know where it got them frankly it i do i have said before i think that'll probably affect everybody differently Yes, we can read and detect energy if we are at our best composure, optimal awareness. Yeah, I think definitely if I don't have like, as they say, a pony in the race, like if I am not too wrapped up in my own narrative, then it's fairly easy. Um, but if you want something to be true badly, then it can be hard to be objective about it. So if when you're coming from an objective place, a lot of times... I think it's easier. Never heard of Tian Tian Men. Yeah, I've not heard of Tian Men before. So you remembered as Tian Men. That's interesting. Yeah, not not for me. It was Tian on Men. So Tian on Men is kind of in between our yours and mine. Oh, did you do salvia? I everybody I, I I won't do salvia, but everybody I've heard of that did salvia, I would say ninety five percent of them at least said they hated it. So I don't recommend salvia. Everybody just gets scared. And I think from what I understand, when you do salvia, you kind of forget that you did a drug. Like like if you if you eat magic mushrooms, then you're like, okay. I, you remember that you ate magic mushrooms. So when you see weird stuff, you go, you're going, okay, that's fine because I just ate magic mushrooms and that's why I'm seeing these. But if you forgot that you ate magic mushrooms and then you were seeing all this crap, it'd be like way scarier, right? Like if I'm just sitting here and suddenly I saw all that stuff because I didn't know why. And it seems like salvia is, is more like that. But I mean, I guess you have to do salvia to really know and I'm, I'm not going to. I don't see the point of like risking getting terrified. It's really kind of a hardcore thing. It, you really have to be hardcore to, to take that knowing what you probably should know, which is that most people hate it. Now everybody is painting their roofs blue, including Cliff High. Uh, you know, it's funny because I've always loved blue tiles and I always said if I get rich I'm putting in blue tiles because um, I just there is this building that has these beautiful cobalt blue tile like kind of curvy tiles and almost all the houses have them kind of brick orange tiles and I, I just don't like brick orange I love blue I'm like ah I'll put in blue tiles and then I'll like have like a like maybe a gray trim or white with the gray walls. People used to tell me that I need to stop being so nice because people will attack that which is crazy to me. Um, you know I don't think there's anything wrong with being nice uh, as long as you don't like let people take advantage of you. You know like just have your boundaries up for that like. 
don't loan out all your money and then they don't return it or something like that. In fact, I do recommend people try to be nice as long as you have that safety boundary up, like limits. Yeah, see, I, <laughs> I'm not messing with... Salvia is definitely not recommended. Four of the British family are missing. A granny picture of Kate came out two days ago and it doesn't look like her. Huh. But didn't she go in for surgery or something? Like abdominal surgery? So she might be on... Um, she might be on like... Uh, what do you call that? Um, prednisone or something. And that will make that happen. It does sound like uh, the king is in trouble, though, because they, like, dropped everything instantly. And so that... I'm wondering if he has that turbo cancer. Yes, if there are terrible beings and people here, what would it take to end them? What does, what does disease-causing bacteria think of our bodies? So what would it take to end... Or, or get rid of bad energy beings. There's only one thing I know that really makes them fly out of your area, and that's positivity. They hate it. It's like toxic poison to them. It literally is toxic positivity. Uh, and I, that's another reason why I think that's the only way. So, like, say there's a negative evil thing and you go, I'm going to fight it. I'm going to fight it. But the thing is that whole energy, that fight, that hate, that anger, the violence, that's the energy that feeds those things. So I like, I know so many people are like, how can I fight them? And literally I think you're feeding them when you take that attitude. It's their kind of energy and you can't win against them using their energy because that is their native habitat, that kind of energy. So they're always going to be better at it than you. However, what you can do is just generate a lot of positivity. They hate that crap. And um, if a lot of people do it, I think they'll, they'll be out of here. I don't think they can stay. They will hate it. And I do think also that you'll find you have like a certain natural protection the more in tune you are with your positivity because like you will know when people are dangerous. You will know when it's time to stay away from them. You will have that instinct where this is a bad place to be. I'm going over here. It's like your path will be more clear. You know, really, that's the best protection is to never be in the fight than to have to fight. If you're worried about losing in a fight, if you just happen to not be around in that circumstance, that is the absolute easiest way to win is to not have to do the fight. Famous people all seem to have body doubles, twins, doppelgangers, gangers, or whatever. So, you know, the thing, though, is we were talking about this, that, you know, the face has changed. Everybody looks different. I look different from what I remember myself looking. We, we've seen money bags, eye color change. There's been so like when everybody's saying they look a little different, a little different. I, I'm just not convinced. It's not just that, that their face has changed, that uh, and then you've got filters, plastic surgery and they're constantly having work done on their face every three years. Uh, they're 28 years old and getting facelifts. So, I mean, like, how can you ever track it and know if they're a doppelganger or just a whole bunch of plastic surgery and, and some Mandela's? I love installing blue towel. It's one of the colors that are rare. I don't know why more people don't do it because there was the, this bill. I said before, there's this building. They put it in. It was a beautiful... Uh, shiny tile. It was just, I just love it. And it had a little bit of a two-tone in it, so it wasn't too boring. Oh, I just love that tile. I think I looked it up and it was a commercial tile, but I'm, I'm sure if I really set my mind to it, I could get it. But, you know, redoing your whole house and tile, it's like $15,000 or something. So, body double has a mole above her lip. Oh. Prince William. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, I wouldn't see, I don't know, it's tricky. I wouldn't be surprised if they had like a body devil 
put her in this car, have her drive that way. Um, but did they really have a body double, like, standing up, giving speeches and all that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like... I guess we'll find out. I don't know. Or is this just her face all bloated because she has 10 medications that she's on? It's just so tricky. So a lot of the official photos that are released, you know, they are airbrushed, as they used to say, uh, photoshopped or AI upgraded or filtered. Did these elite get the shots? You know, maybe they did. Maybe they were bought into the story. Who the heck knows? Placebos are interesting. People can heal themselves because... Yeah, I know. Placebos are very interesting. I saw a research rate lately where they said that... Um, they told people they were giving them a placebo, but they told them it was a placebo. Like... The research said, this is a useless pill that I'm giving to you for your hay fever, right? And even though they said it was a placebo, yet their hay fever still improved. So that, that was weird. Like, I guess just thinking about taking something to get better would be enough or something. I mean, I really hope that they would maybe redo that one and see if it replicates, but it's a weird concept. Ever heard of Japanese dwarf flying squirrels? I don't think so. Adolf Hitler had brown eyes. They're blue last I checked, right? They used to be brown, but now they're blue. Yeah, money back. I'm talking about Hitler, but yeah. Money bags too. Not that I think the two are similar, but both of them did have brown eyes and now have blue. <laughs> the only way you can compare money bags to Hitler is the eye color changes. Family of dwarf flying squirrels. Oh, they're cute. They're all in the snow and stuff. So, hmm. Yeah, I don't remember those, but I, I don't know if I would have known, but it does seem a little suspicious. Wait, 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 wait. We don't want any sound. No sound. Yeah, those are cute. Let's see. Are we going to get images of them flying? That might be too much to ask. Does not appear so. So I don't think I've seen those because I just don't remember any flying squirrels being that cute. They look like little woodchucks or something. Japanese dwarf flying squirrels. How many animals will fly? I know. <laughs> With AI being everywhere, it's almost impossible to know if a picture or video is real. It's getting like that. Now, I... I do feel like I can kind of tell because there's a little bit of a shadow, a shading thing that's, they're a little more extreme on the AI. Like, I kind of feel like when you take a photo and if you ever manipulate photos yourself, you can change the contrast. It's like the really simple manipulations. You can crank the contrast. You can change the uh, brightness. But it kind of, it, it looks to me every time I see an AI, it looks like the contrast the difference between the light and dark is a little bit too much. It, it's almost like a stereotype of itself, a stereotype of a real photo. So I feel like I can still kind of tell, um, but it is getting harder all the time. And it hasn't been out that long, so. Don't it, yeah, don't it, don't it make my brown eyes blue. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, actually, now that you think about it, but. I don't, does anybody had blue eyes turn brown? I can't think of anything offhand. Uh, any situations where they had blue eyes and it went the reverse. Oh yeah, that orca floppy fin. I had that on a while ago. 
So, like, I guess, what was it? They got damaged or they get, like, not enough fat or food or something. So the orca f top dorsal fin can just kind of, like, deflate. <laughs> now, now it can. It didn't used to do that, but. I just saw a video on how to recognize AI crochet in an image. Honestly, it's so obvious in the photos. I don't know how so many people are fooled. You know, it helps if there's like fingers or something because you can kind of get a... Also, look at the lapel sides and the earrings don't always match. The bending of the arms... All right, we got some flying. Japanese flying squirrels ah, are some of the key. Quiet. All right, first of all, I want to see the flying. Dang it. This thing won't, like, uh, let me jump forward without play. Here we go. And move quickly. Ah, there we go. All right, so there's the flying. Huh, okay. Interesting. So what's different about those is they just have way less flap on them. Like the ones I saw before were larger and they just had way more membrane on them. So I'm thinking maybe just physics has changed enough that they don't need to have that much anymore. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, there's been like a rash of um, videos where creatures or like sea creatures are attacking. So like, what is it? I think it was a seal. A seal like stabbed two teeth into, uh, was it a seal or one of those bigger seal-like creatures? Tab stabbed his teeth into somebody's inflatable boat. Uh, a shark was biting a boat. Um... There was one other attack. It was all in the same week. It was like three weeks ago I saw. I have them saved, but I just haven't got to those. Now they say that we're Jewish Nazis. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's always changing. <laughs> Mogwai, yeah. Don't feed them after dark. After midnight, that's it. After midnight. It's, it's old, that old movie. Okay, where are we? I haven't even, like, started. All right, we've done that one. That's that moon. Uh, okay, we did that one. All right, this one. <laughs> This one was weird because uh, this bombing one, let's see, who came up with this one? Okay, this one was by Jim Eni 3. Jim Eni. J I M E N Y 3. Good find. So we've covered that Black Tom explosion on the Statue of Liberty, but apparently it was bombed in 1980 also, but they mostly just got the museum building. Um, 
I don't know, you know, so this has been weird lately. I've, I've had a number of situations this week where I swear I don't remember something. Like when I first hear of it, I swear I don't. And then like three hours later, I'm like, oh, wait, maybe I do kind of remember that. And as much as I swear I have no recollection of it at the time, three hours later, now it's starting to sound familiar. And I'm, I'm distrustful of these three-hour delay memories. Like, I kind of feel like maybe the download's getting stronger and it's getting me or something. But um, this left eye has been bugging me, too. Um, so this is another one like that. Like, I swear when I first heard of it earlier today that... I did not remember the second bombing, the 1980 bombing. But now the more I think of it, I'm like, well, maybe I remember it. Um, but the weird thing is that when I looked it up, <laughs> that was me. <laughs> that was me seven years ago that posted on this. And I'm like, I, I did not remember having ever posted on the second bombing. So here you can see I, I claim that I got these from YouTuber Bri Brian McFarlane. Um, who I swear didn't have a MAC, but now does. I, I thought it was MC Farlane, not Mac Farlane, but in this timeline it was Mac Farlane. Um, was a YouTuber who covers Mandela's. I don't know if he's still super active. He used to be like pretty active. Um, so I talk about the Black Tom one, and then I talk about this bombing of the Statue of Liberty. Now. When I heard about it this time, I did a Google, and interestingly, I found this, and then I found the same link that this leads to. So there's really not much info on this 1980 bombing of the Statue of Liberty. Um, I also did find this link there, and this one is kind of weird because you can't really see the date or anything, hardly, on any of this. Um, some of it looks a little off, like it, it says that the PLO did it, the uh, Palestinian Liberation Army, that's at the PLO, the PLO, they were a pal that Palestinian group, I can't remember, Liberation, what was the O stand for, I can't remember, but um, yeah, so there's that blurry one. And then also I found this. And so there's a little bit of info here that's not really useful because it's basically just summarized down here. Now, one thing interesting about this is it says um, the attack is on the Statue of Liberty. And then she says Ellis Island, New York. And the Statue of Liberty is not on Ellis Island. Last I checked a couple days ago, it's on Liberty Island. So assuming it didn't sneak off, uh, then this is wrong, according to the current timeline. Um, so other few bits of tidbits of info, it, apparently it was the Croatian freedom fighters that put the bomb in there. Um, and they basically blew, blew up mostly just the museum under the Statue of Liberty, but 1980, I just don't remember an attempted bombing of the Statue of Liberty in, in 1980. But according to this, I did post on it myself seven years ago. This was extra weird because I was reading this and I'm like, I must have read this seven years ago because I saw that I had upvoted it because these red orange uh, markers here indicate my own upvote. So I'm like, I upvoted it. What do you know? And then I went, wait, that's me, Looney Gecko. I, I, I posted on it, and then I read that. I'm like, whoa, okay. And then I go up here, and I'm like, I posted the actual post. It was me. Okay, whatever. So now, you know, hours later, it's like, do I remember? Maybe I do, but yet I, it's not a clear memory. It, it's just a feeling like maybe I remember. I don't know. It, it's kind of bugging me. Okay, so there's that. Um, so yeah, you remember a 1980 bombing? Has that been discussed before? Yeah, 
Yeah, so, you know, there's been a lot of questions about the uh, ovens and the Holocaust and whether they, the gas chambers, or whether they could really have gas that many people. And they're saying, no, they couldn't. I, you know, maybe they couldn't now. I, I do not recall any of those doubts ever existing until the last few years. We know, like, the whole history of that war has changed greatly. The locations of the beaches... Uh, the location of Berlin even, the Berlin Walls changed. So, you know, other things might have changed. Um, in fact, I'm sure they did. So, there were no Croatian fighters. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. I don't think there was a bombing in my old timeline. So the Black Tom event was another time that they tried to blow up the Statue of Liberty. You can look it up on the Google. That's why you're not allowed up into the um, into the uh, flame area. Whereas people remember being allowed up into the flame area. But now there was a Black Tom in your event and they no longer let you up to the torch area. Darth Vader looks different. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Some kind of... um, Yeah, no, we've had that on because Darth has those cod pieces, I think you could call it. Um, and then also C-3PO grooves him some cod pieces. Uh, a cod piece, I should say. Um, <laughs> that was on a while ago. I'm like, wait, there was no cod piece. I mean, like, C-3PO looks like he has little boy shorts on from the back, too. It didn't used to look like that. And uh, it's just, it's wrong. <laughs> okay, so this one got me, um, I thought I had this highlighted, but no. Okay, I gotta gather my brain cells because this takes a little bit more explaining. We've had on before the teratomas, uh, and so some years ago we started to see this talk about these like tumors that look like would grow teeth, they would grow hair, they were all creepy, and over time they've sort of moved towards looking more like little mutated embryos, right? And then the last time I checked this, they'd say that the teratomas usually grow in the o in the ovarian area and that they're you know so I'm like that's it this, this thing is gonna grow into some kind of like life form or something because it's you know with the shifts and it's it's just about here now um this prediction is coming fairly accurately um so basically here this this article thingy is a scientific article is talking about the uh possibility of immaculate conception basically parthenogenesis in humans and so they're saying now that apparently we had a parth partially parthenogenic uh birth now so when i mean partially um they're saying so we've talked about chimeras in the past where uh, like a human or say a cat or whatever would share dna from two different um like two different they have two different dna's that somehow co-share the body so it would be like the story has always been that they are twins that were kind of combined in the womb instead of separating out they just became one and, and somehow the different dna did not reject each other like i think they would have in the old days but now they won't okay so now they're saying that part that there can be a chimera that is part parthenogenic and part the original baby. So how that works is that the parthenogenic is like basically a replica of the mother. And then the other half would be the egg sperm that would have developed normally, except for this parthenogenic. So they're basically saying there's a combo, there's a chimera that's part mother clone parthenogenesis mother clone and part normal baby which is no longer a normal baby and that these things have been born and 
grew up fairly normally and have been discovered through random testing for other things. So they, they're basically hypothesizing here that, well, if there was parthenogenesis or partial parthenogenesis, normally you wouldn't catch it. Nobody would know unless they did some weird DNA testing and figured it out. Let's see. Um, so now they're talking about the Okay, so spontaneous parthenogenic activation of the human oocyte is not rare. So basically they're saying that the egg of the, of the female can activate on its own. That's parthenogenic. Um, and they're saying that's not rare. But eventually results in ovarian teratoma, a benign tumor reported at least since the 19th century. Um, now they're talking about how close they can start to look like like babies, um, and indeed, if I'll go, I'll jump ahead later and show you that they are becoming more baby-like. And um, they have a word for it now: fetiform teratoma, or humun homunculus, which that showed up last time. But All right, so there's this baby, this uh, child called FD, a viable male baby named FD. That I'm sure that's just initials. By studying FD's tissue samples, the group concluded that he is a parthenogenetic chimera, a child with two cell lineages. The first one derived from normal fertilization, and the second one is parthenogenic, a spontaneous activated oocyte, which duplicated its genetic material. The parthenogenic cell fused to the normal embryo, resulting in the chimera composed of cells derived, derived from different embryos. Okay, so we're like halfway there. We have half a baby that's parthenogenic. I do think that we will get full parthenogenesis in the human uh, down the line somewhere. I mean, it's totally heading in that direction, which means that... Um, the, immac the Immaculate Conception of Jesus is not even going to be a big deal anymore. Uh, well, I guess it will be somewhat of a big deal. But that, the concept of Immaculate Conception is on its way. Basically, it just means that the mother will have a child without having got any sperm donation to that child. So they're also noting that the only reason they found out is because they had to do blood testing for other things. Then they're also talking about how we have apparently learned how to manipulate mice so that they will um, give parthenogenic birth. So now we have a mammal that can do it albeit with manipulation on our part, but it is doable. So they hypothesized that rare cases of human parthenogenesis resulting in viable, clinically normal individuals occur and pass unnoticed due to the absence of any abnormalities. And they're going through the sequence of how it would happen. So they're kind of, I think if I remember right, they were saying basically we should just like check for these. We should do studies on these, uh, just people, and see if we can find some of these. And that we might find them if we look. Okay. Um, you know, somewhere in here, I think I covered everything I wanted to, but... Uh, 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 wait, here, up here, I think, was something I wanted. All right, here's the spot I wanted. Spontaneous parthenogenic and androgenetic events occur in humans. Now, this is interesting because parthenogenic is spontaneous female replication, but I have not heard about androgenetic events in humans. Um, and then the examples they give, as best I can tell, are all female. So uh, 
what's an androgenetic? I should probably try to check into that later um, if there's any samples of it. But here they say uh, results in ovarian teratoma. Uh, so like it says hydatidiform mole, but then when I look up hydatidiform mole, that seems to be in the female, not the male. So it says respectively, but um, so hydra form I don't have no idea if I'm saying that right. Best I can tell is this thing, molar pregnancy. And so what the heck is a molar pregnancy? Because I've never heard of that. But apparently it's, uh, i not sure if I covered this. I think I did. The story now is that when a fetus is developing, the placenta actually is created by the fetus itself. Now, I remember the mother created the placenta to nourish the fetus, but now the fetus creates its own placenta out of the outside of the egg. Um, so that means that the placenta is like non-native to the mother. It's not the mother's DNA. So now apparently um, if things go wrong, then the placenta can be in there, but the pregnancy itself can fail. Uh, the placenta can start to grow weird cysts. It can become even cancerous. Um, all kinds of problems can happen. It, so it's kind of creepy, actually. Uh, and um, a molar pregnancy is basically like the pregnancy itself is failed or or like the fetus itself is failing or not well developed or has the wrong amount of DNA, but yet this placenta thing is just kind of cranking in there and ugh, it's all creepy. So I don't really want to talk about it too much because it's creepy. But um, so that's, uh, that's molar pregnancy. And then the teratoma is basically when the ovaries, the ovarian tissue just kind of, starts going on its own and makes a tumor so that's pretty weird and so they'll call it like a teratoma so if it's a fetiform teratoma then it looks like a fetus so i've had these on before but basically they look more baby like so this is like one of these fetiform teratomas you can see it's starting to have a a shape like a baby there's a head there's arms there's rudimentary feet uh there was nothing that sophisticated uh last time i checked uh somewhere in here there's even one that has like oh here this is one um it's got a whole rib cage it's got hip bones um i think if i clicked on this there was there a photo yeah here we go so this there was like a whole thing um so it's just getting very orderly now, these teratomas. Uh, here's another one. So they're starting to look, you know, kind of baby-like, as creepy as it is. So I, I suspect we're getting there where there's going to be immaculate conception, basically. There's going to be parthenogenesis in humans. So that's... That's what that coverage is. Cats can solve complex puzzles. I was reading and even push objects to reach what they want. I think now much more than in the past. And I believe um, I've covered where they're kind of copying music and stuff now. Um, I've seen videos where they, they like say they ha dogs, cats hang out with dogs and then cats will start barking like dogs. They'll start walking like horses if they hang out with horses. Um, and I don't think they used to do that 15 years ago. They're just different now, more sophisticated. Now I see videos of bears acting like people. Yeah, chilling in hot springs. Um, well, there was just one on today where um, a wild leopard just strolls into camp and begs for food. Uh, like literally five feet away, you know, like, ugh, no, that didn't used to do that.
a cat jumping like a rabbit. Yeah, I just... They can, you know, they can uh, skateboard really good now, some of the dogs. Didn't used to be able to do all that stuff. All right, this one's interesting. This one came from, this one's from Mark Tyus. I don't know what's up with this, this monocopter thing. I just, I mean, it's only from 2021, but this is not that sophisticated a technology. Basically, there's a motor here um, that will ha send electricity to this little propeller, and then there's this one thing sticking out, and then the whole thing can fly. And so here's an example of it flying. I, I don't know if this was here or not. I just, it's just, it's weird. Are we going to like... Full screen is unavailable. Okay, then you don't get it. So here he is flying it. I'm just suspicious if this was always possible to fly like this. Um, so they're saying it's modeled after that plant seed that goes around like that. And I'm not sure if I had that plant seed on. I know we had, a, like, I'm not sure if I had it long ago because I know we've had those seeds on here. So it's called a monocopter. <laughs> yeah, but see, it does fly. Now, if you were in there, that would be, your brain would probably be rattled because you'd be going around like this, but it would work for some kind of spy thing or something. I don't know. And also, if you... um. You can see that center piece holds still, right? So. Yeah, it still would. I, I'm trying to think if you had like a camera there and it, it spun with the spin that it could possibly have stable view. It's just, it's weird. I've just never seen anything like that and I'm really suspicious about it. Okay, this is the armored kitty cat. That's the Tiana Men one. Oh, the other thing I was just noticing this week, tinnitus, like the the whiny noise. Um that's just been a lot. It tinnitus doesn't really bother me because I I don't know why. The sound is just there, but I just don't really care, but it's just been so loud lately. I don't know if it means anything. And it's not like steady. It'll just be like, like really loud for a bit. And then it'll kind of step back down. All right. Uh, let's see if I can type with the darn. So this one caught my eye. I was looking at kidneys, and then I'm like, <laughs> so even if you don't type in adrenal gland, I, I just was looking at kidneys without the word adrenal gland, and I saw this, and I'm like, what are those things on the kidneys? So I don't remember those. And uh, they're the adrenal glands. I guess they clamp onto the top of the kidney now. Um see those things i just don't think they were there before like i said even if you just type in kidney you'll find a lot of images like this so i was like why are there hats on my kidneys <laughs> so maybe that's why the kidneys had to go up there so they could get their hats i don't know so i feel like that's changed a long time ago, we talked about the kidneys not having a kidney bean shape anymore because they've got three bumps instead of just two bumps like kidney beans have. Yeah, so, okay. And then this one is from Bill. He <laughs> was asking about magic truffles. Have I ever heard about magic truffles I've heard about magic mushrooms, but have you ever heard of magic truffles? 
these this is a weird story so the magic truffles are the like the body of the magic mushroom and i couldn't even figure out if it was the same as the 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 mushroom itself so you have a magic mushroom and then the mushroom is like the fruiting body of the fungus so where's the rest of the fungus is still in the ground so the truffle is like uh the body of it like now they're saying that they're almost as powerful uh as the magic mushrooms themselves i'm like well why would people just only want the mushroom why don't you dig the whole thing then um and then there was this thing like in uh where was it amsterdam where i swear they legalized all this stuff but now they didn't like they, they didn't legalize magic mushrooms there i swear they legalized everything but this reality they legalize less stuff but one of the loopholes in Amsterdam was that they the writing ended up legalizing the magic mushroom, but not the magic truffle. So now they're like, oh, magic truffles are illegal. I don't think we had magic truffles in my old time. I'm really suspicious. Any of you guys that do mushrooms, you ever heard of magic truffles? Um, I don't know. So then there's a rumor, oh, magic truffles are legal everywhere. But then other people are like, no, no, it's just Amsterdam. Um, but so they're also called sclerodia. Some places are calling it sclerodia. <coughs> Excuse me, sclerotia, magic truffle. So Bill heard about these magic truffles. Our magic truffles. Ten different magic truffles. Sclerotia. In addition to the well-known Silocybe Mexicana, blah, blah, blah. Those are different magic truffles. What are magic truffles? Is a compact mass of mycelium that's grown through the rest of through the rest of the mycelium of the mushroom. Mycelium is a mold, blah, blah. Magic truffles contain psychoactive compounds, the same ones that are in the, the magic mushroom. The official name for magic truffles is sclerotia, are also named philosopher's stones. So, you know, I've heard of philosopher's stone in legend, and it's kind of, I guess, the... Um, I've heard different things, like it has some kind of magic powers, you, you can create things. Um, I have not heard of them as just being like um, a seer kind of thing. I thought it was like a, a power, but... Anyway, so that's the deal. Anybody, anybody heard of magic truffles? Definitely not. Okay, this one was found by Jacqui... I'm not going to use the long loser name, username, but Fruit Loops Logopedia. Fruit Loops to me has not changed in a while, but there's this weird history now, and I'm going to the Logopedia from '94 to '99. Apparently, Fruit Loops now had an exclamation point with an extra O on there as the bottom of the explanation point, and that was an extra Fruit Loop. So anybody remember those? Because my original timeline, Fruit was F-R-U-I-T, and then it's flip-flopped several times, and let's see, it went F-R-U-I-T, then it went back, went to O-O, and then for a brief while, it was back to F-R-U-I-T for a while, just a few weeks, and then back to O-O. But I have never seen it with five of the loops in there. So apparently in 94 to 97, they had a certain set of colors. 97, 99, another set of colors. Uh, yeah, no. No, no, no. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Did not have that in my timeline. Has anybody seen that version? I've never even had magic mushrooms. Not sure if it's worth it. I guess it depends on what you mean by worth it. I mean, it certainly is a trip. I 
Will our intestines ever go back to being zigzag? Probably not. <laughs> so there's normal truffles and then there's magic truffles. So normal truffles are not magic truffles because magic truffles would be um, a psychedelic. So, I mean, I, when people say shrooms are way worth it, I've definitely met people who who got a lot of anxiety and did not have a good time on mushrooms. So f rule one would be if you are going to try it, start on a low dose and then a little bit more and a little bit more because a bad trip is almost always because somebody took more than they could handle. So you want to sneak up on that. And not everybody has a good time. Now, I do think that those people that had the anxiety, they already had an anxiety problem normally, and they were trying to work on it. Um, and sometimes you just have to confront something to work on it. And if you think it's going to be like a magic fixer, it's not. It'll help you, but it's not like... You know, you got to do the work still. So it's a lot of people go, oh, I'm going to take magic mushrooms and be all healed. Now, magic mushrooms will help can help you show you the way to, to get healed. And it can show you a lot of your mistakes and what you need to do. But you still have to take the steps. Uh, a lot of people do get helped by it. But the other thing is, if you have any history of schizophrenia or anything like that, they recommend you don't because it can exacerbate schizophrenia. I think it's extra good for depression, though, because depression is sort of the reverse of schizophrenia a lot of times. You're, like, stuck in your ways so hard, and it's just so hard to get out, and you don't know the way out because you're so used to that way, and you can't see the way out. And um, I think it can really kind of shake you out of your uh, ingrained track. It can help you show what's outside the track. Schizophrenia people is kind of the reverse where your brain is already all over the place and it's here and it's here and it's here. So if you've already got that problem, then I would not recommend psychedelics because the psychedelics do that too. And if it's already a problem, you'll be exacerbating it. Never heard of sloth bear? Yeah, those are newish. I mean, we've had them on. They're not new, 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 but they're newish. So magic truffles are everywhere now. Like there's any place that they have magic mushrooms, there's magic truffles, I guess. There's, what is this said, like seven popular stra uh, strains of it and nobody ever heard of it and it's kind of weird. So, you know, I thought that when something stuck like six years or something, it wouldn't change. But turmeric changed back to turmeric. So it was turmeric when it first showed up, when I first ever heard of it. And then it was turmeric for like six years. And then lately it's turmeric again. So now I, even if it's been a long time, I do think it can change. Anyone with serious trauma and abuse will hate psychedelics. I, I don't find that to be the case from people I've talked with. In fact, a lot of people with those issues were greatly helped with, with psychedelics. Now, I won't guarantee that that will happen, but I have met a lot of people who just came to terms with a lot of issues that way. So, yeah, you know, I agree. Magic mushrooms can't heal you. They can show you the way and I do think that they kind of ease it a little like they just make it a little easier to make the steps like afterwards you just feel a little bit something I don't know how to describe it just a little less constricted a little less locked in We did nothing for me just made my head feel like it was in a fishbowl that's been my experience I just feel kind of dumb um, psychedelics are quite different than weed, though. So, it, weed's not that different from alcohol for me. 
just feel kind of stupid. Yeah, see, angels don't fall. She said trauma and abuse, but still like psychedelics. Yep. I'm not keen on meeting jesters who want to flip me off. That's a little more DMT. That's the hardcore stuff. Magic mushrooms. Like, DMT is sort of like rocket to Mars and Looney Land in seconds kind of thing. Magic mushrooms, you can just take a little bit and, and just see a little bit of colors and feel a little weird, and you can sneak up on it. And it, definitely don't want to start with DMT. That is just not for everybody. So people usually say magic mushrooms are probably the friendliest, you know, kind of thing to try. The entire state treatment program for mental illness is broken. Yeah, you know, so there's been a lot of talk lately that the uh, SSRIs, if you really look into the research, they're saying it doesn't even really show much evidence of efficacy. And in fact, if you stack an SSRI against exercise, exercise will show more improvement than an SSRI. Um, there's no research on long-term use of SSRIs. Uh, you know, I don't know if it was always like that, but it, it apparently is now. So it's something really to think about. Andy and Bear. I do believe we've had these things on before, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to say. They're goofy. But yeah, we've had those little monsters on before. For me, there was brown bear, polar bear, black bear. Now there's sloth bear, sun bear, moon bear, Andean bear. Yeah, and then there's, uh, there used to be just panda bear, but now there's um, that red bear and the um, and then the, br the brown panda bear, too, showed up not too long ago. Uh, so, like, magic mushrooms. Um, everybody's a little different, but... If you take, like, what, at least, it'd be, like, two grams, maybe. You need to do enough or you won't feel too much. Then um, you can see extra colors. You might see colors brighter. Or you just might see, like, sparkly rainbows, uh, like, patterns in, like, if you just have, like, a splatter pattern in the wall, you might see a mandala pattern in there, um... Like, I saw a beautiful misty fog, like, on the beam. It was really pretty. Um, I'm trying to think what all. Um, just pretty, you know, you can see, like, one time it looked like my hand was getting see-through and there was a brilliant white light behind it. Like, a really kind of neat light, though. But sometimes you can feel stress, like... Um, if you have negativity in you, you can have to battle that. Like, your brain is kind of fickle. Like, a, you know, like when you're in a dream and your brain is all fickle and you can suddenly get all scared and then you just have trouble getting a grip? Uh, that can happen too. So that's why it's best not to take a large amount right away because you have to see. You kind of have to build your muscles for controlling your emotions and get, you know... The first time you do it, it's kind of scary anyway, just because it's the first time you did it. So you already got that fear that you got to battle. Um, so you kind of learn, you know, how to, like, manage the situation. And a lot of that happens in the beginning part when you're kind of adapting to the energies. If you can get, like, to the middle with without too many problems, then it's kind of, a lot of times that's the fun, where the fun begins. What are the new rules for all those bears that <laughs> play dead? That's a good question. You know, we don't have them here, so I haven't really looked. <laughs> all the cottons keep changing. Yep, definitely. Are mushrooms legal in America? No. <laughs> no. Let's see. Are they illegal anywhere? I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I don't think so. 
where they decriminalize, meaning they're not really legal, but they really won't bust you. I think some states have, or some cities have decriminalized them. Not here, though. California was working on it, but then uh, good old Gavin Newsom, our governor, vetoed it. Like the one time I wanted him to actually approve a bill and he doesn't do it. Just typical. So the amount different people can tolerate on shrooms varies widely. Some people are highly sensitive and only need a little bit. If you're on an SSRI or something, you may need a ton and it may not work because some of those uh, other pharma drugs block it. Yeah, weed is legal, is getting legal in more states. Uh, it is in California, but I really just not, it doesn't do much for me, so it doesn't really help. The one thing that weed is good for is eating because it makes food taste really good. So if you're ever going to try it, make sure that you have some yums like ice cream. Um, meat wasn't really good, but... Um, Ice cream was really good. Like fat and sugar is like really good. I bet I bet desserts with like chocolate is probably amazing. Do we have any experiences of people tripping on magic mushroom truffles? I didn't look it up, but I mean people had said they worked. So I mean there's a lot of places that sell it. You probably can go to Arrowid if you know that website, and you could probably find them. They're supposed to be like magic mushrooms from what I read. It's just a, like a little bit weaker, so you have to eat more. Has the governor of Texas been on a wheelchair from the beginning? I saw that uh, like four months ago, and I too was shocked because I did not remember seeing that. But, you know, I wasn't sure. I am a little suspicious, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, Newsome. That's our governor. Um, you know what? We're at the end of our little trip for today. So I have two left, but they're not a big deal. I'll do them next week. So that's it then. It's been an amazing two hours. I swear time goes faster all the time. It's impossible to keep up anymore. But we are at the end. So thank you for the Mandelas. Shari, you had a lot this time. Um, but all of you did have a lot. So I really appreciate it very much. You know the drill. Think good thoughts, everybody. This is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Timeline. Da -da.